We have so many options in terms of aspects, and deciding which one can be rather difficult. Huh? Stay a while and listen. <laughs> We can either save up astronomical amounts and get the best one out, i.e. hit the trees with a hatchet for a weeks and weeks and weeks, or we can buy one that isn't quite as good for substantially less gold. Today, let's go over some of the not so expensive aspects, huh? their current costs, as well as different template archetypes that they may be used for. Here's a quick rundown of each of the aspects and the cost for each core. Feel free to pause the video where needed to take note or you can just search them yourself on outlandmalls.com. Keep in mind, to unlock your aspect, you need four cores, two distillations, and an aspect kit. An aspect kit is created by a crafter with a master crafting diagram and some materials of that prospective trade. The cores, distillations, and master crafting diagram are dropped by monsters and everything can be purchased from another player, which is recommended as trying to farm this by yourself might take an astronomically long time due to the will of the RNG gods. Do note though that you will need magic essence as well to fuel your aspect. You can get magic essence by finding magic items from monsters, identifying them, and then you can recycle them with any type of crafter tool. Another thing to keep in mind is that the prices shown are as of this video's release date. I've been making videos covering Outlands for almost five years now. It's always a good idea to check the date of the video and realize Outlands is always updating. So if you're watching this a year from now, there's a good chance the average prices are considerably different. That said, let's focus today on cores worth 20,000 gold or less. Let's start with the most inexpensive cores out there. Water. At 6k a core, it's definitely within reach of a new player rather quickly. This is a rather versatile aspect. I've seen alchemist mages play this as it gives a bonus to alchemy skill, which would affect your purple potion damage, healing potion amount, and duration of your buff potions. Not to mention your critical spell chance. I've seen dedicated group healers play this since it increases your healing too, making those small heals actually very strong to your party members and mana efficient. This alone makes it an amazing choice for new player tamers, giving you the ability to heal your pets for substantial amounts, both mage and dex are tamers alike. That said, there's an increased chance for your weapon specials to go off, which paired with the other things mentioned, even make it a decent aspect as a pure dexer. Moving on to discipline cores. How on earth are these things worth only 6,200 gold a core? I'd imagine the mana mechanic typically confuses a lot of new players, so it shied away from. You either need to keep your character drunk to spend mana, or click the auto renew stance button on the weapon codex. If you do this though, you get a good bump in damage bonus as well as damage resistance. Discipline gives a damage bonus to weapon specials, but as a new player, you may not be getting many of these due to lack of weapon special links, which is really where this aspect shines. Lastly, a chance to ignore weapon finisher cooldown. While great, you do need tier 5 and a weapon codex even to activate the finisher. It seems like I'm being negative on this one, but if you're a wrestler and go into crab stance, you're a defensive powerhouse starting out. Not much around your level of farming can kill you, and this aspect does in fact snowball into something more powerful around tier 9. You're kind of pigeonholed into a pure dexer with this aspect though. I haven't really seen anywhere a mage discipline guy is running around. Another one of the most inexpensive cores is Earth. Earth is selling currently for a whopping 6,300 gold a core. This aspect is one of the more underrated aspects, but mostly due to its functionality being defensive and melee focused. Don't let the price fool you though. I watched my good friend Amish Hammer level this bad boy to end game and stand toe to toe with monsters he shouldn't have. Now, sure, he didn't kill things as quickly as the next guy, but this aspect shines in giving you lots of wiggle room if you make a mistake in pulling too much or fail to dodge a mechanic making it a great choice for a new player to Outlands who's learning the dungeons or who wants to tank for their friends. Now, make no mistake, it has a chance to increase damage by 250% damage, which is always nice seeing those big numbers go off. If you want to play a pure dexer, this is a great choice to start with. Let's switch it up a bit. Death. <laughs> if you're playing a necro starting out, this is almost a no-brainer. At 7,500 gold a core, you really feel the boost in player power even right at activation. 
increasing the power of our necromancy in both terms of effectiveness as well as bonus unholy symbols. Our spells or melee hits also have a chance to apply disease. Even though it mentions a chance to apply disease on melee, there isn't much of a place for death in a melee's life. Once again, I'd strongly recommend this for new player necromancies. All right, Frost, viewers in the comments, do your work. Post below just where this shines. I really can't find a place this sits in. I even asked the companions in new player channel. The biggest perk they could say is, uh, it's only 9,000 gold per core. Someone mentioned the chill effect for bosses, but as a new player trying to be a niche support build for bosses, isn't really something that many would recommend. So again, chat, tell me why Frost is good for new player or anyone really. Now, let's heat things up a bit and go with fire. This is one of my favorite aspects for both a Dexer as well as a Necromancer. This does come in almost twice the cost of the other cores we have been talking with, about at 11,000 gold. A percentage of damage taken is reflected to your attackers. Damage you deal causes miniature flame strikes. And lastly and leastly, field damage resistance. This aspect not only deals great damage, but seeing the flame strikes go up is just tons of fun and feels satisfying. And the more fun you have, the more chance you'll forget to go to bed and the longer you will stay up farming experience and gold. Holy, some would say holy OP, but at 12,000 gold a core, we know that's not true. But it is a great option starting out for new Dexers, giving us stronger chivalry abilities, ranging in everything from increased swing speed to increased damage and defensive bonuses. It gives us bonus symbols to cast more shiv abilities, and lastly, a chance for holy shield, which makes this a defensive powerhouse for not just you, but also your party members. Let's sing a little bit about Lyric. Okay, I'm just kidding, but at 14,000 gold a core, this is kind of a steal. Being a worthwhile aspect for both new players and in-game players, you would think it would be worth tons more. Targets we bard take more damage from us. Our barding buffs are stronger, which mean better healing, damage resistance, and damage. And last, but definitely not least, a built-in bard reset slash break ignore chance, meaning the cooldown before we can attempt to bard again has a chance to reset immediately. Now this is crucial as a new player when our effective barding is low and we fail barding a lot. If you're playing a bard, you're more than likely playing in Lyric. Blood Aspect. This aspect is great for a new player for a multitude of reasons. First, being it's versatile, you can play it with almost any template. Who can't benefit from more stats, more hit points, more mana, and more stamina? Now, one thing of note is that the strength doesn't actually increase your carry weight, but we also get a chance to inflict a bleed on damage done, whether it's a spell or a melee hit. And then lastly, once you find a guild to hang out with, they're gonna love you because after 50% hit points, it, it, it does an increase in damage. So that makes it great for bosses. That said, out of all the aspects covered today, it's definitely the most expensive at 16,000 gold a core. Some of you may have noticed Gadget at 9,000 gold a core. The issue with Gadget is it's made for tinkerers and tinkering in itself costs millions to increase in skill. So I'll leave that one off the list for a new player. Also, I didn't really talk anything about weapon aspect abilities. As a new player, your chance for these isn't too high. So not really something I took into consideration on this video, but it definitely feels great when they go off and something you should look at and take into consideration as you're choosing your first aspect. I hope this video was helpful in your decision of what aspect to pick starting out as a new player. So tell me in the comments below, which are you picking and why? Shout out to the Patreons, the channel members, and you for liking this video as it helps for discoverability for myself, but more importantly, UO Outlands and my fellow streamers. Speaking of streaming, make sure and come by the live streams most evenings at 8.30 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube, Twitch, Kick and Twitter and Facebook. That's right, five different platforms for you to choose from. Do me a favor guys, comment below your next video suggestion as it helps me decide what to do next for you guys. Other than that, Pwn Star Gaming out.